Hello and welcome to Virtualize Everything. Today we're going to be taking a more in-depth look at one of the setting configurations for Home Assistant that I feel you're going to need to configure for almost every deployment of Home Assistant. So out of the box after we deploy Home Assistant here on Proxmox as a VM, you'll see that we get an IP address assigned to it from our DHCP server. That's great because we always get a correct IP address for our network range and whatnot as we deploy it. But later on, it's going to make interacting with Home Assistant a little bit harder as our IP address for our Home Assistant server is going to change. Generally, a dynamic IP address on any server, on any network, isn't a good thing. And it requires extra configuration and extra hassle to keep up with. So most of the time, we set these to fixed IP addresses. I feel Home Assistant is no different. So let's go log into the Home Assistant web interface and take a look at how to change the Home Assistant IP address to that of a static IP address. The first thing you're going to need to do is access your Home Assistant instance at your Home Assistant IP address colon 8123. Then you're going to need to log in with the login that was created during the deployment of Home Assistant. Once you've logged in, you'll be greeted with something that looks very similar to mine, and this is your Home Assistant dashboard. Here from your Home Assistant dashboard, you're going to go to Settings, and then we're going to go to System. Here at System, we're going to then go to Network, and right here you should be greeted with your Configuration Network setting. Today, here in America, we're going to use IP IPv4. So we want to make sure that IPv6 is disabled and mine is disabled as you can see right here. Here under IPv4 it's going to be set as automatic as default and you can see that my DHCP server has assigned it an address in a class C network. And you can even see the address of my DNS server. We do want to take note of this as we may have to configure this in a setting. Let's go ahead, change it from automatic to static by clicking on this circle right here. And you can see that it was nice and it pulled over all of the pre-propagated information from our DHCP. HCP server. Now here we are in the correct VLAN and if you're not familiar with my network I run a multiple class C networks that start with 192.168 and then I set my third octet as my VLAN number so this is going to be VLAN 12 which is correct for where I want this to be. So here inside of my network I automatically assign IP addresses using DHCP from 2 to 199 that gives me 200 addresses thereabouts we're actually losing a few but so it's 198 addresses, I, I guess, to be exactly correct, that I automatically assign. And then I hold addresses from 200 to 254 for myself for automatically assigned static IP addresses for things like this server. Now, there's a lot of different IP addresses there, and we can kind of don't need 100 to be automatically assigned, and we definitely probably don't need 50 for our servers but that's kind of just how I break up my network. What we do want to do here is we want to change this fourth octet to something that's going to be outside of our automatically assigned range for the configuration of our DHCP server. Now, if you don't have your DHCP server configured like mine, usually you're better off setting higher numbers, but I do highly suggest you go in into your router and set your settings so that you have some static range so you don't have to worry about overwriting your DHCP server or rather overwriting the IP addresses that your DHCP server has assigned somewhere else in your network. For me today, I'm going to assign this as 204. Now our subnet mask is going to be similar to our CIDR notation and it's going to be what's considered a class C, 255, 255, 255, 0. And that corresponds to our 192, 168. Now there's some instances in subnetting where you're going to use a different CIDR notation or a different subnet mask because you want to further break up your networks. And that's entirely up to you. I use VLANs. VLANs are very effective for doing the same thing. 
and I find them a little bit simpler to understand. So I'm going to stick with that, and I think that's going to be a little bit easier for a lot of the people that are coming to view my tutorials to understand how to set up their network and segregate their network. If you want to do it differently with different IP addresses, feel free to look up subnetting, and it's a great and fascinating topic if you're into network engineering at all. With that, we're going to move on here and we're just going to go ahead, press save, which should save this configuration. And we're going to wait for this little circle to stop spinning. Now, one thing that you want to remember when you're doing this configuration is you're actually changing the IP address that you're communicating with your server at. So in a lot of instances and almost every instance to be exact, you're going to have to go up to your URL bar after you click save and you're going to have to enter a different IP address. If you're using a DNS server or something like Pi-hole, PFSend, or any of those other DNS servers, filtering servers, or recursive servers, you're going to have to go into them and you're going to have to change your configuration to represent your new IP address. Once you've done so, you can then log back into your home assistant web interface just as I've done here and you can check and see that we have set a static IP address and we're ready to go. If you have turned on QEMU guest agent on your Proxmox server during your deployment of Home Assistant, which if you followed my tutorials, you have done so, you will also find that your IP address has changed right here under IPs for your Home Assistant VM. If you don't have QEMU guest agent appeared and you're getting no information here, you can go into options. And here at options, you can see QEMU guest agent. If you click on that, press edit, you can go ahead and turn this on. You will be required to do a restart once you turn that on, but then you should be able to get more accurate and more information, including IP addresses from your Proxmox server about your Home Assistant VM. I hope you enjoyed this very simple tutorial on how to set up a static IP address on your Home Assistant VM here in Proxmox. So now that you can start interacting with your Home Assistant instance, in a little bit more of a normal way. And by normal, I mean consistent. So you're always going to go to the same IP address. And when you're setting up things like DHCP servers or DNS servers rather, to point to your Home Assistant instance so that you can use real names instead of remembering numbers, you have a good solid starting point. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. You learned something about Home Assistant and that you have a great evening. Please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing to help virtualize everything grow. As always, have a good night.